Hello everyone at home and here. Um, my name is Gal, thanks for coming. Um, I will try to share um, our experience at Insights um, with the challenge of visualizing data um, to find what works. I will start basically with like five minutes about Insights. What do we do uh, so that you can understand uh, the challenges of measuring impact and measuring outcomes. Um, and then um, I will move to some um, sort of like theoretical aspects of what outcomes really are and why actually do we measure. Um, and then we'll move to the practical side. I prepared a Google Sheet for all of you. Um, so you can actually sort of like practice some elements of it and we will try to build um, some stuff on it um, and also understand some basic functions. Um, it's a very short time for that, so you will forgive me in advance for not going through all the functions that are there. Um, but the whole goal there is for you um, to get some sort of like feeling at how you can actually do it in your own organizations, which was my uh, original goal here. Um, so basically, Insights helps uh, leaders, executives to get advice directly from their people. Uh, we founded it uh, seven years ago. And what you see here um, is the key thing we actually measure. This is the mission statement of Insights. We are here to change decisions. We build a platform to enable leaders to have better decisions, and that means changing the decisions from the original things they wanted to do. Um, and we measure our impact by how many decisions actually changed. And the current figure is 82%. Um, it's a website. Um, it's a website. So for you to understand what we call the theory of change, the starting point is that somebody enters our website and creates a question and launches his own sort of instance, his own consulting website, which will look like that. And um, as part of the process, we have three key uh, stages. The first one um, is um, reaching out through various channels. It can be online, offline, roundtables, uh, SMS, emails, um, pop-up, whatever reaching out to his own people with the one question that the decision maker decided to ask. Um, the second is getting the insights. So instead of like giving hundreds of ideas with votes and now let's do um, an ideas contest, we actually say, wait, we have a way to synthesize a lot of qualitative open data into a very short list of insights, which are similar to the executive summary um, of a consulting firm. And then once decisions are made, we actually can send each and every participant a personal update on impact. Hi, Sarah. This is what you have said. That's what we learned. And that's what we decided to do. So we actually closed for the first time the feedback loop. And I had a very interesting discussion with Daphne the other day. It's very easy to manage a community of up to 200 people. But once you have more than 200 people, everyone feels that they're almost like excluded from the decision-making procedures. And if they're excluded, at some point, they will opt out from the community. And that's what we try to solve here. So um, that's basically the product. Um, to give you just an example of how it looks like, um, here is um, the website of the US uh, State Department. And they ask for advice on how to improve the passport experience. Um, and you see here that they got something like, uh, this is the question they asked. It's one open question that somebody defines, and they got a lot of um, uh, 1,000 answers, which you can see over here. And, uh, and people can like, and people can comment, and it's open for the community. Then, at the end of the day, the decision makers get the insights, which you can see here. Um, mm -mm -mm. Insights, this is insights. For all the users. Yes, they yes. Can see the yeah, the yeah. It's an inclusive process. And of course, you can close it for one community. So here you see the insights. Behind each of these insights, you can actually see all the advice linked to it, and then you can make decisions. And with that, I hope you understand in five minutes um, what we do. Um, here on the left side, in a second, you will see the insight. Uh, uh, uh. And on the right side, you see what they decided to do. All the American citizens, hopefully in the next uh, year or two, you're going to get a text message before your passport expires. That's one of the insights that uh, came out here. Um, and the idea for the State Department is to avoid the situation where everyone wants to renew their passports and everything is blown up. That's the product. Now, of course, we could do that um, in a one-on-one -on -one basis in Insights. We could reach out to organizations, one after the other, call them and have 
50, 100, 200 organizations using it and paying a lot of money. Um, but our goal was a bit different. Um, strategically, in terms of our own mission statement, we want to maximize our impact. Um, so we decided to go on a very low price model and try to expand it as much as possible and make it a self-service, a do-it-yourself tool. And this is now we're moving to the second phase, um, and that's basically the dashboard that we developed at Insights. Um, um, and every time we update it, of course, um, and that's the dashboard that we're going to uh, explore in a few minutes uh, of what our impact is and how we actually um, move forward and what we need to change. So now let's talk a bit about theories. Um, I, can I make it full screen? Wait a sec. Maybe we have... No, huh? Isn't it... Ta? What do you think, Tal? Any full screen option? This one. No. Nah. The one right next to it? Next yeah, to I'll try this one before. Yeah. Oh, okay. Just the first thing you get. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk a bit about theories of change. And I've seen the least people here, uh, some of you managing organizations, um, and I think all of us um, understand uh, or heard the concept of having a theory of change. Let's just go on the theory of it. If you already know that, apologies. So in every public um, initiative, we can apply it to the private sector as well, but put that aside, we have resources. Um, we have budgets, um, we have uh, certain structures, we have authorities to regulate, to limit certain liberties of people. And basically what we do, um, we do sort of like a policy making, a planning process, where at the end of this planning process, we decide how to allocate uh, the funds that we have. And then we start to deliver the plan that we actually built. So we have a process, let's hire people, let's set procedures, um, let's do certain things, so like the bureaucratic things. And then we generate outputs. By the way, this conference, that's an output. We have 150 people coming here, participating in a certain program, and we hopefully will deliver the outcomes that ROI expects us to generate, which are, by the way, how would you define ROI outcomes? Social change. Social change? Participation in the ROI community. Participation in the community, which I think it's like between the outputs and the outcomes, because when they give us money, and at some point you'll hear about it, um, um, then they expect us to do something more than that. But you said social change. Uh, how do you measure, by the way, social change? Do you have any ideas on how to measure it? Change in perception. Our perception? We're talking so generally about social change. I actually think it's not, I mean, I think that the fact, th this is exactly the, the first thing you learn after doing a lot of measuring in governments and in other organizations, and basically that's what I've been doing the last 10 years in the Israeli government and then after. Every person when needs to measure himself or herself, the first thing they will say, oh, we are very different than others. That's, that's a whole different ball game. We cannot, it's very difficult for us to measure. But do you remember the slide um, yesterday morning of from 1,000 to 1 million? This is exactly the difference between outputs and outcomes. That's the point where you understand it. ROI will basically measure the success of the program by how many people we influence to certain goals, which they also define. So we can measure how many of us started initiatives. We can measure how many of us um, um, reached to a point where our initiatives are actually delivering change and how many people we actually affect. So this is the classic theory, the, 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 they call it the um, um, logic uh, model, the classic model of, um, of how to deliver social change or how to deliver change in general. Also in businesses, they might have a similar model. Um, I should say, I won't talk about it now, but the way you design your planning process is the most important thing because this is what will define whether you're going to find the right outputs to achieve your outcomes. I will repeat because that's a crucial sentence. The key thing in delivering social change is to find what to do in the outputs 
in order to deliver you outcomes. Or basically, let's find what works. And that's called effectiveness, in Hebrew, mo'ilut. Unlike efficiency, which is let's do it in the lowest price possible. Most social change initiatives fall because they're not effective. And then a lot of people invest a lot of time, but nothing happens. So let's just understand what outcomes really are, because this is crucial. Now, I would like you to think about your own organizations and ask yourself, what is the outcome and how do we measure it? So an outcome is something we have very limited control on. If we could control um, the fact that we're here, that's not an outcome. It's an output. Okay? Birthright. What's the outcome, outcome of birthright? Kids. Jewish babies. <laughs> Jewish babies. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> but things like that. An increase in affinity to Israel. Yeah. How would you measure it? Maybe people who have been on Taglit and then moved to Israel or came with their families to visit. Uh, Activists in their community for it, whatever. Yeah. And then you'll compare it with any other program and say, okay, birthright is effective. And birthright is effective. Um, eyes of the target audience. It's very important. The outcomes always come from the eyes of the people you want to leave an impact on. You do not measure outcomes in terms of us, but in terms of the one million. We are the tool for, for them. Nir Bakad, the mayor of Jerusalem, always say outcomes are about the city, not the municipality. And you should measure it from the eyes of those you want to have an impact on. From the participant, how many participants launch an organization? And it reflects the purpose of your team, of your organization. If you cannot say, you know, I wake up to have people advocate for Israel, I wake up to change the world and have more people having more organizations, doing, then it's not the right area. Outputs are, um, you have full control, almost full control, things that you actually do, and it's a mean to an end. And process indicators are usually a yes, no milestones. Talking about visualization, if you define your measurements right, you'll be able to visualize that. If you don't, you won't. I mean, if you try to define your measurements in a like, very vague way, guys, it, it's not going to work, and the next stage is going to be tough. How would you define the outcomes, outputs, and processes of insights? Just to taste on what I'm going to show you next. How do you define our outcomes? Outcomes are already set at the outset to change decisions. How do we measure it? Percentage of uh, decisions that were impacted by insights. The change. Yeah. Who will say it? The, users the decision makers. And what's the outputs? Tools that you use the platform Platforms. And what else? Instruction. Uh, Number of users. So if somebody is launching a website, we want to know that you know people gave advice. And then, um, let me take you... Um, mm -hmm. Is an outcome for you also like a sense of procedural justice? So like the idea that, you, that somebody feels involved in the decision-making process? It's more of an outcome, yeah. yeah. Because um, if... So, two things. Uh, we want to change the way decisions are made because of two things. The first one is making it effective making their decisions more effective so they can find what works. And the second one is for the participants to feel part of change. But there is one reason to do all the things we're going to discuss in the next uh, 35 minutes or 30 minutes, which is we want the visualization of our data to help us be more effective. There is no real reason to measure all this stuff and to waste your time if at the end of the day you produce an amazing dashboard but it doesn't help you change your organization. So if you did measuring and if you did visualization and you cannot get insights on what you should change, something in, in the way we do it is, is problematic. Now, how can we actually find these correlations that we're looking for? It's by comparing the outputs to the outcomes. So at the end point, what we want to do is to try to control in our data what we did differently and then see what works. 
So let me show you the, for the first time, I think, the internal dashboard of insights. Um, so what you see here is the current figures, and all of that, by the way, and th that's the practical side of, of the session today, everything is Google. Everything is Google Sheet. All the things you see here, you can actually do by yourself, limit access, and again, this is the, the template that I, I've prepared for you. Everything is there, and it's amazingly easy not that easy, but like you, you can do, you don't need to pay millions of dollars to, just it's, it's there. And it has certain structures on how you can actually do it. So here you see sort of like descriptive statistics. We know that uh, we currently have, and uh, I'm showing you that for, for you to see um, what are the insights that we got from our data. And I'll, I'll be very specific in what we actually changed because of data. So we see that um, today we have a lot of people creating websites, but not a lot launching their projects. So we understand that we have a problem. Um, actually, I'll, I'll go that. Uh, I'll, I'll talk about it soon. And then we see that many projects being launched, but not that only 30% will have answers, and then only quarter will pay. Um, and and you see some of the data we have here about the current situation. And overall, we currently have 600 uh, sites, uh, 630 projects, half a million users, answers, et cetera, et cetera. What you see here is the graph, again, all in Google Drive, uh, is the graph of the number of sites we have. So somewhere here, at the end of last year, we opened the site for everyone. So everyone now can create a site. And what you see here is just the growth, which was expected in the number of sites we have. And here comes the interesting part. So we are now trying to scale, and we want to understand what will make people attracted and launch their sites. So what you see here is the beginning of our campaigns where we try to bring people to our site and see how many of them actually convert. And we always change message. Every month, we have a different message. So we can actually track what happens with the conversion rate as any campaign. But then they launch the sites. This is some numbers that we, we have. Can I ask how you isolate the, um, the change in the metrics? Because um, there's maybe other things that are happening rather than just changing the, the headlines. Like if you were mentioned in the news published here. So we, have, we see on Google Analytics where we copy the data to here. We see the channels and we see whether they came from the campaigns. And, of, and we separate the campaigns. Um, but here you see the operational data. And let me tell you a story. What you see below is the insights to decisions. Two years ago or three years ago, we realized a huge problem. People are using insights to get the insights, but then they do not make decisions. Done deal. Thank you, uh, my uh, audience. Thank you, stakeholders. You invested your time. You gave your advice. That's it. Shalom. Bye-bye. You know, this is a pain. Only a third of the projects had decisions. And then we asked ourselves, you know, what do we need to change? But we only saw that because of the data. It was the data that connected the outputs with the outcomes. You know, we saw that we are not delivering a change in enough projects. Where we actually, wait, let's break it down and let's see what, what we need to change. So we, we, input, uh, we entered several measures that basically enabled us to double this rate last year. And that's the kind of things you can learn from measurement because we know we could focus on any other parts of the process. But then we decide, wait a sec, the way we introduce ourselves to decision makers, the name of what we do, now it's called a decision making tool, we basically change the expectations so that people understand that, wait, <laughs> at the end of the day, you're gonna make decisions here. It's not for the fun. You can have a lot of fun, but make decisions at the end. So that's, um, that's our own dashboard. Um, the next challenge we have is how to improve that. That's what you have seen before, the 27% launch. We saw that from the moment we opened it, people are creating sites, but they're not launching projects. And now we need to fix that, and that's the next challenge we have in, in, on the way to scale. Questions, comments, so far, I've talk, spoken for 20 minutes. Too much. Can it work with the uh, younger population? Yeah. Like, uh, I, I imagine it, you know, the uh, like younger population really gets into this 
website, get information that's less accessible? It's one question, one open question. No, um, all the information overload is, you, you can always upload things, but very simple, very straightforward. Um, going back to the passport example, um, how or who or what analytical tool was used to take all the Facebook or the posts um, to translate Dances, into yeah. insights, what the insight should be? Like that seems like a, a really yeah. difficult process, yeah. part of the process. So that's, that's the key, um, um, the different element of insights. We actually developed a way to crowdsource the analysis. So we ask users to do very simple tasks which we all do in qualitative research, like uh, highlighting, categorizing, et cetera, we actually ask the users to do it. And uh, both in America, which was surprising for us, and in Israel, when you, the decision maker is asking people to help him analyze the data, they're very happy to do it. Not all of them, 15%, but they're happy. So that's, that's the... And then give them the options to categorize themselves. Yeah, every yeah. Data. themselves or others. Yeah. yeah. But, um, um, but in order to like have this machine scaling up, you know, from my, in, in my point of view as the, as, the, as the CEO, there is a point where you need to stop as a manager, look at individual challenges, and wait. We need to understand how we invest our very limited resources in changing the flow in order to achieve the outcomes of insights. So all the things you see here, the, th this is the connection between the outputs and the outcomes. We know what we have in the current system, and then we ask, you know, what do we need to change in order to make it better? Any questions about measurement and Google before we move to the... Yeah. Yeah, I'm just, I just, I use a lot of Google spreadsheets, but I keep them as spreadsheets, and I'm, I'm not really sure how to do this, how to create these. Can exactly the question for the next phase. Um, <laughs> so let's understand what's behind it. So here you see only the dashboard. But in terms of the structure, how do you actually do it? So we, I would recommend several stages, and they're all in the next template, but let's, let's show them here. So the first one is have one spreadsheet where all your data is organized, and this is what we call the BLD. This is like after, it's not the, the raw data, it's basically the tables that, that we generated from the raw data. So each and every thing here is having um, 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 a formula, as is, uh, might be a bit complicated, but a formula that is based on the data itself. And here, you can actually see the data itself. Now, in, on our data set, we have a lot of projects because every organization will have a project. These are the historical ones. Let's move to the new ones once it's, it loads. Um, and Exactly as you might measure, give me one of the organizations that uh, you manage. Let's have another example. Moisha what? House. Which, which one? Moisha House. Moisha House. Great. So what is the unit that you try to have an impact on? Probably the number of participants. The participants. Not the number. The number is, is mostly, might be your output. Okay. Because, I mean, you can pay them, they will come for lunches, and it's fine. But we, our subjects, our unit is projects. So we measure ourselves in project. And here you see all of the projects we are currently running. So um, um, the Ministry of Justice uh, started something about uh, Znut, about, uh, doesn't matter. Um, 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 we, have, um, we have a local council doing something about uh, solar panels in Ashelim. Um, so each of the projects here will have a, a, a row. Um, and the data sheet that you have seen before is basically the aggregation of all these rows. Now let's go to what you get at the end of the session, which is a template just to understand and to start to play with how you can actually measure and visualize your impact. Any more questions so far? Issues to, yeah. Two questions. One, um, where is the set of assumptions factored in, especially if you're crowdsourcing uh, the kind of feedback loop? Um, is there a human being that sorts through those profiles to ensure that they're providing what, what is, I guess, generally considered legitimate advice? Mm -hmm. And then separately from that, um, you have a limited data set. So you, you may have a, somebody creating a project that doesn't factor in what would be an essential set of data points. 
and then people are addressing a problem that in fact is not like accurate. So someone in an organization who doesn't have P and L responsibility may not look at that as piece of the equation. But very good question. Yeah. Um, questions. The first one we have the um, reporting options on the website. What we found is that out of 50,000 answers, I think we filtered only 10 so far. Based on <laughs> other people or the managers doing reports. Okay, um, so like they look at it and they determine. Yeah, they yeah, respond. yeah. And, and because like it's a lot of answers, so it's like it's very different. We always change the way people see it in order to get some sort of feedback from the people participating. So it's, it's very radical cases where actually people answer uh, in, in, in sort of like things you would not like to see on the website. Oh, not, not, I'm not saying that, I'm saying like that they're not, like, no, not smart. Like, oh yeah, that's fine. How do you know? Because uh, at the end of the day you get, we, we try to synthesize this to insights. So even if under one insights you have 1,000 people not smart, um, it will be one line on the bottom line oh. on, on the report. And the second thing is, um, you know, we target decision makers. One of the things we realized, by the way, with the figures is that we need to reach out to senior people and then they can ask good questions. Otherwise, all the process is problematic. So if you reach low people, you might say, hey, I have great um, uh, conversion. I have a lot of outputs. But this is exactly the point of measuring. Like, yes, it's going to bring us a lot of outputs, but it's not going to cross the line to outcomes because they're not going to make decisions. So if we want to achieve the decisions, Let's, and we understand that we get people that, uh, then this is, this is what visualization should generate for us. And then for your US clients, some of them like passport control, for instance, do you have a separate firewalled um, crowdsourced group of people, or could you, that is siphoned off by security clearance or um, nationality, yet. things like that? Not yet. We do not provide the people, we provide the access, the platform. They will bring their own. Uh, so, um, if you want to manage your performance, there are four steps you should follow. Now is the practical side. The first one, let's define who is the unit. Subjects, people, projects, courses, nonprofits, schools. Who are the people that you want to have an impact on? Once you define these people, I created for you a list of subjects. These are yours. Um, these are your names. Um, and you know, separate that. Have the first step, the units that you want to have an impact on. And then, of course, you can add cities, a lot of personal information, all the data you want. One thing I would like to show you um, is how you actually do data validation. Have you ever done data validation on spreadsheet? Like data validation enables us to define a field and make sure that all the entries that people will put in will be the same. It's very easy. Let's first create under the settings the options. Let's say that we want to have CD. I prepared it before. Can you, can you all see? Okay. Oh. And you just need to go here define the parameter, click here on the entire uh, column. Here it's under, uh, uh, we need to open the menu, do data, data validation, list from a range, you can of course define it here as well, and you pick the range, and the range is under settings, and here we basically created a drop down. So now we can easily make sure and have the right data. Now, you, only if you have the same data, we can then aggregate it very easily on Google. Okay? So, but that's one parameter that we can have. The second thing to, or the second stage, is to define the programs or the intervention that you actually have there. So let's say we speak about private schools in the United States. What outcomes, um, or let's say, so the private schools are the units. And can, let's think about different programs that you actually, uh, Cheryl, if nobody uh, met her before, Cheryl is working for an organization in Washington, D.C. 
that is actually an association of thousands of private schools around the United States. So let's say we are here to measure the impact of your own nonprofit. And let's say we ask ourselves, wait, we want these uh, schools to do what? What is the outcome that we as the association might want these schools to follow? We want them to make better decisions for how they're running their schools. Okay, we want them to make better decisions for how they're running their schools. And if you need to now sit in the board of this nonprofit, which programs would you offer them to implement? Which things would you offer them to implement, for instance? Which things might achieve this outcome? Be strategic planners for a moment. How can you improve the way private schools in the U.S. actually improve their results? Hmm. Training and performance management. Training. So you want to offer them training in different... Let's talk about training. What options do you have for training? You might have several options to do training for schools. Let's say you might do that on a video, you might go to the schools, you might bring them to Washington, different ways to do training. And then, of course, the question is what works? Training in different trainings or in different aspects. You might offer personal advice, a hotline that you can call. So all of these things are basically um, the programs that you operate. So here, um, I assume that uh, we're going to speak uh, maybe about birthright. So I did some programs of the state of Israel. Like, let's assume the state of Israel would like to have more people involved in the Jewish community. And they have, uh, 10 minutes, okay, and they have different actions. So one of them is Massa, one of them is the birthright. Educated parents might work in order to bring more young Jews to um, be more loyal and, and connected to Israel and the local synagogue program where the state of Israel will fund certain things. So all of these programs, at the end of the day, are directed at the same outcome. We want to have more Jews connected to Israel. We want to have more Jews um, having their own identity, etc., etc. And each of these programs will have a different theory of change. Then the third thing here, what I've done for, for this shit, is actually trying to say which of the units we have, which of the people here participated in which program. So, uh, for instance, uh, Nir Katz. Nir Katz? No. I'll be Nir Katz for the... Gala. <laughs> um, so, have you done Birthright? I have. Amazing. Yes, amazing. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> so now you get that. And then, of course, the question is, after you have the output, so now we know which of the units participated in which of the programs. And the second, um, by the way, this one is also data validation, which is simple. I, we've done it before. And then we move to the outcomes. Now, within the outcomes, I set here three different outcomes, but of course you can set more. Have you returned to Israel? Have you established an organization? Or are you involved in a social justice movement? Yes, fantastic. You're a great success, Nir. Um, <laughs> now, the one thing I've done in this shit is having, and that's the second thing I want to show you how to do, now I need to bring to this sheet the outputs data from this side. How do you bring something from a different sheet to this sheet? Anyone know the answers? What's the name of it? That's for Excel, uh, what? Not reference? Not pivot table? VLOOKUP. Great. So here, you basically see a VLOOKUP thing, which you can watch later. But it's very, if you want to measure yourself on Excel on Google Sheets, <laughs> at very early points, you'll have to know that. So if you manage your data separately, like you see here, and now you're going to bring something from a different um, sheet, you do a VLOOKUP on what is the name or what is the field that you want to basically connect from where you want to look the data. I mean, where do you want to take the data from and which column? So here, I want to take the data based on Neil Katz from the previous sheet, okay, and bring the second column, which is which program you actually participated. Should I repeat? Is that, so, yeah? yeah. So what you just did is you literally brought in data from another sheet yes. into this one through a formula. Yes. And you 
simply just told it where to take the data from and it automatically yes now if you everything now is on Google so if you do for instance um, uh, import from a different file on Google sheet you will see that you can actually connect different Google sheets okay so you yeah, so you might have an organization or in your organization like you have five different people doing their own performance each and every other part in, of America and you can basically connect all of them to one Google sheet where you're actually going to do the, the data collection and the next layers. Okay? So nobody sees all the aggregations, but everyone is managing their own, their own data. Yeah. Just, I don't know. We might have talked about software, but if I have lists that are, that are different, I see that you have an ID column. So like if you have a list of names and there might not be all the exact names on another list. Like, what's the best way to manage So it's the lookup. It will take, um, it, I would recommend using emails or numbers, but the uh, lookup will take the first name um, from the other thing. And if you do not have any, any um, um, variable which is similar on the other sheet, um, it will say uh, not available. Oh. And then you solve it, because it's not nice to see NA in a lot of places, you solve it by adding if error. Mm -hmm. If error, this formula then show nothing. I, I will show because I've done it in the next. So here we basically connected the outcomes. Whether Mr. Katz here um, returned to Israel, established an organization, and the outputs. Okay? Um, the definitions of these we talked before, and again, you, you probably understand that 80% of the success is to define these questions right. Because other uh, otherwise, you cannot move to the next step, which is basically doing a table. And now, let's aggregate all the data we had in these different sheets, five minutes, okay, to here. So what I've done here is another formula I would like to teach you. That's almost the last one. It's called count if or count a. And this is basically, let's take um, a whole column and see how um, many cells there will have data. So here, I just you can see it's 19 and then I counted how many programs we have and then I counted how many subjects had programs because some of them we didn't subscribe to anything and now we have 15 percent subjects with program which is again a formula of course you'll all be able to do it after that um, and now when we have this one we can easily create a chart and select this thing, and this is done. Let's, because this is too long, let's do uh, participation. And of course, we can play with the 1000 and we can define under customize um, the minimum and maximum. Fantastic. And then we can also set colors exactly as you have seen before. It's that easy. So let's put that aside. And now, um, remember before we did the uh, CD options? So now we can actually implement it here as well. And we can copy the names of the cities from the settings. And we can actually see how many of the subjects live in each city. And this we will do by um, subjects, count ifs. Count if, uh, sure, count if, and then we can basically take a range of the subjects and define, this is where we want to look for how many cells we have with this figure, and define it and how many things will have Jerusalem in line. So we actually linked this thing with the formula. So when we copy it to the next line, we can actually get all of it because it will automatically take the things from the left side. So it looks for how many times we have the thing in this cell in the subject, okay? And here comes the last thing, um, which is the most important one. So now the challenge, what, what, what is the killing figure we are looking for? And this is extremely important, and it, uh, the, the Excel implementation is the second stage. When you start to visualize your data, the one thing you look for is what Tony Blair defined as the killing figure. What is the killing figure? 
that if you not go and say to your board, to your participants, to your stakeholders, they will all understand that we need to change, we need to shift things. Now this killing figure, you can define it without data. For instance, we know that 80%, one of every two birthright alumni um, um, will be active in this community. And this is like double than other programs. Fantastic. That's a killing figure. Now we know what to do. We know the outcome, we know the output, we know the program, and we know what works and what doesn't. And then we can play. And then if you come to the other program and say, oh, <laughs> we know you're less effective, now let's think, what can we change? That's the sort of discussions you want to have based on data visualization. How do you do it here? So we have the programs, I've copied them uh, here, and with the count ifs, we actually know how many people participated in each program, and then we actually know how many people return to Israel, establish an organization, and involve, are involved in social justice. How do we do it? With count ifs. We can have several conditions on the same table there. And here we see our data. So you see that Birthright was extremely successful because Nir was uh, uh, becoming a, a fanatic Zionist. Um, <laughs> But you see that educating parents was less successful. Just, of course, it's an example. Um, and then you can manage your resource as well. And that's basically what we did in Insights. And that's basically how we're actually changing again and again and again things on our tool. So it's very simple for startups. I mean, startups, the data you have is, of course, uh, there. And uh, I think that Tal can speak about it better than I do. Um, and, and of course, big companies always measure themselves. But in the social impact sphere, that's a different challenge. You measure people. Questions, comments? Yes. A little off topic, but um, <coughs> so for us, security is a concern. Um, and, and using Google in order to store sensitive data is, is not necessarily something we, we would trust. Um, Which organization? We in Europe. In Europe, we operate in some countries where they clearly are, and we have been hacked before. Uh, people have also attacked our website. Um, so, first of all, most of our CRM is not is not in Google. Like we don't use Google Sheets. And, and then, secondly, um, we are rather hesitant with putting some of our sensitive data, such as email addresses, in there. Can we maybe elaborate a little bit on a? security levels, B, to what extent Google can be trusted in that, and C, whether you know of other businesses that use Google. So first, I think that if you look at the terms and conditions, you see that in Europe, uh, all the big companies change their terms and conditions to address privacy questions and like uh, security questions. B, I think that if you upgrade to Google um, um, apps, you get, again, a different agreement. And um, C, you can do all of that on Excel. It might be uh, less nice, but you can also do it on Excel. Um, D, I don't know which organization is it, but what I think we found today is that um, the fear from security, I mean, at some point, somebody will leak it to the press anyhow. So <laughs> we, we try, I think we should think about how not to follow our ancestors in like trying to limit ourselves to the point where we cannot collaborate um, um, and just need to balance the things. Any more questions? Good. Um, so I encourage conversation if since I'm ending our time. Um, thank, you. thank you for the presentation. Um, and thank you.